In this video we talk about the basic principles of surface paneling with Power3D, a plugin for 3D Studio Max. What you need for surface paneling is a surface, we call it a panel surface, and you need objects which you uh, want to away on this uh, panel surface, and we call these in, this in the next following videos panel object. With the method surface paneling you can create amazing design in a really efficient and fast way but to control your design properly you have to understand the basics behind this. So uh, we look, uh, have a look first at our panel surface and uh, on vertex level I just transform my surface a little bit and um, to change, uh, change the design and if I then choose my Array object, this, I mean, uh, this means my panel objects uh, which are weighed on the surface uh, again and I update this. You can just see that they are following uh, my, uh, my transformed uh, surface, my deformed surface. I can also just choose another surface. I can just say I want to choose the surface of this uh, toast geometry and if I update my uh, Power 3D you can see that my arrays, uh, array objects, my array panels now sit on this geometry. You can do something similar with my uh, array objects or my panel objects. I can just exchange them. For example, I can just uh, uh, say I want to exchange it to uh, this kind of shape. Here we have the circles inside and now exchange it and we have this hexagon inside. I go into uh, uh, my uh, th uh, settings and I exchange it now. I don't want to keep the old one. I say no, I don't really want to keep the old one. And you can just see that I now exchange it and now instead of the circles you can see hexagon geometries. Depending on uh, the way I build my um, panel object, I can then uh, change uh, settings, for example, like um, the size of my hexagons and uh, we don't want to go too much into details so I just prepared it already. If I just change the radius with uh, uh, for example something like the bitmap controller I go into auto update then you can just see that I changed my um, changed my uh, design of my um, of my hexagons and with very few steps and I choose my surfaces again I can just swap it again to this surface and I go into uh, update and you can just see that it goes on the, uh, back on this surface and uh, to close this part of my video important is to understand uh, the surface panel and to understand the panel object their relationship and then you can do a lot inside this panel objects for uh, for your design if you work with surface paneling you have to understand uh, the principles of uh, array and there are three different kind of arrays actually. There's a one-dimensional array, a two-dimensional array and a three-dimensional array. I just built up this one-dimensional array. You can see that you can uh, exchange it completely and this is my two-dimensional array and you can see that I can change my panels and this is my three-dimensional array. It takes a little bit longer and I just um, uh, just have a look at this in my isolate selection mode and uh, we turn it around a little bit and what's important to understand is that one dimensional arrays uh, are not related to x, y and z so 1D doesn't mean that is uh, related to z the direction the same like the two dimensional array uh, it just means there are th two dimensions or in this case uh, three dimensions and uh, this is important also for your uh, understanding of uh, surface cladding. So when we have a look at this Power 3D node we can see that the three-dimensional array has 10 array objects in the first dimension, 10 objects in the second dimension and 10 objects in uh, the third dimension means 10 by 10 by 10 uh, array objects and uh, the same with my two-dimensional it has um, 10 directions in first um, dimension, 10 in second dimension and uh, only one in uh, the third dimension and here the same with my um, one dimensional array, it only has one dimension, uh, 10 objects in the first dimension and second and third dimension is only 
one object and uh, like I already said it's completely not uh, depend on x, y and z. So with this knowledge uh, let's have a look what this means for our surface uh, paneling. Uh, we have um, built up um, some surfaces and the surface uh, naturally has two dimensions and we don't call this x and y uh, direction bec or dimension we call it u v uh, direction because it's also not related to x y and z I can just turn this thing around and it's completely uh, uh, not depend on x y and z it's a little bit like uh, talking about mappings and u v w map with no this knowledge it feels quite familiar that um, surface panning works with two-dimensional arrays but there's also something like a one-dimensional array and we have a look at these two methods uh, right now. Okay this is my uh, two-dimensional array I will just select it and we can see that we have 10 objects in my first dimension 10 objects in my second dimension and obviously one object in my third dimension so three dimensional object, uh, arrays don't make any sense uh, with surface paneling and when I change it for example instead of 10 I go into uh, I choose five objects we can just see that um, my array uh, changed my surface uh, paneling and we have uh, five objects in my uh, first direction in my uh, u direction and this also means it's independent from the topology it's, uh, it's not related to the amount of polygons underneath and uh, I just go back into 10 and if I now change my third dimension to four arrays then it has to calculate a little bit because we have 10 multiplied by 10 by 4 uh, objects and uh, when I now open my Para3D uh, menu I just have it over here again we don't want to go too much into detail we can see that my um, array is built up from the, uh, the first and the second dimension but I can change this I can just say I don't want to have it built from the first and the second dimension I want to build it from the first and the third dimension and uh, with this I just go into um, update array and we just see what's happening just takes a while and we can see now we have um, a surface paneling built from my, ten, uh, from my first dimension and my third dimension so you're quite flexible in this kind of settings and you can also turn it around and just say I want to change the U and the V direction and I go into auto update and then uh, you could just see that the four dimensions uh, the four objects go, go now into the U direction and uh, um, the 10, uh, 10 away objects into the V direction. So surface paneling is never built up uh, from three dimensions. Uh, two dimensions make sense, it's the U and V direction, but um, does it make any sense to work with one dimensional arrays? And actually it does. Uh, I just already prepared one here. This is an error which uh, is related to this kind of surface and we have 48 um, 48 objects, uh, panel objects in our um, array and this is exactly the amount of polygons we have so uh, it really makes sense to work with one-dimensional errors first you can't use every surface, every object for two-dimensional errors we talk about this in another video and secondly uh, it's just uh, exactly related to the topology so when I choose this uh, array and I just uh, want to panel it on this surface we just see what's happening uh, in this case okay I just choose uh, chose this object and I go into my um, auto update and we just see that they're moving and you can just see that uh, now again they just uh, fit exactly into this amount of uh, polygons and uh, to show you another example I just uh, move this surface here, here to the right and I just go into subdivision and uh, tessellating and I cre increase the amount of polygons and if I now choose this surface we can see what's happening. If I choose this object with a more dense tessellation and I update my uh, Power 3D we can see uh, what's happening. Uh, 
they sit on my uh, on my new surface, but you can also see that there are just gaps, and it's just related to the amount of um, my uh, my uh, panel objects. We can see we have 48, and we have much more uh, polygons inside my new topology. So if I now go into uh, my uh, surface controller and um, I just choose my surface controller and underneath I just say set away a count to number of polygons. You can see that the program is calculating and uh, we have the same amount of uh, panels uh, compa uh, compared to my topology, uh, the same amount of uh, numbers of polygons. So a uh, one-dimensional uh, surface paneling also makes sense in uh, surface paneling because it's just related to the topology and the amount of uh, polygons of my um, uh, panel surface. And a two-dimensional um, surface paneling is related to the U and V of the surface, so it's not connected to the amount of uh, polygons. And uh, both uh, methods uh, have their advantage and disadvantage. In the next videos we will have a closer look um, at our um, panel surface and uh, what kind of objects and what kind of shapes can be used for two and one dimensional uh, surface paneling and in another uh, video we have a closer look at my panel objects and see how we can build them to uh, do uh, work with a proper surface paneling in Power 3D. Thanks for watching.